Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to my modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to look at a numeric algorithm known as partial sum. We'll talk about why it's useful and look at two different examples of how to use it in this lesson. So with that said, let's go to our favorite website, CPP Reference, on this channel. And let's go ahead and check out the numeric algorithms. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here and we're going to go ahead and look at partial sum. Now, previously we looked at a sort of related function adjacent difference. So you can check out that again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those videos, but let's go ahead and look at partial sum, which computes the partial sum of a range of elements. So I'll go ahead and open up the page, but let's try to just understand it with an example first and foremost. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just draw some container here. Let's put in a few elements here. One, two, three, four, five. And this is our container. Maybe it's some vector, for instance. And let's say that we want to actually write it out in some resulting container and get the partial sum. And what this is going to generate is effectively one here. Then it's going to give us one uh, plus two in the next cell to give us three. And then this value here plus the next value, so six. And then it's going to give us six plus four, 10, and then 10 plus five. Let me go ahead and just label these out here. 10 plus five, four, 15. Okay. Uh, so that's the basic idea. We're basically accumulating in our result, the set of values here. So at this point we had accumulated uh, to generate three, these values, and then to generate six, we had accumulated these values. And then to generate 10, we had uh, these four values and then 15, we took the whole thing here. So in my mind where this kind of comes into play or where this is sort of useful, you can think of an example. At least the first thing that came into mind was um, if you've taken like a calculus class and you're trying to compute the area under the curve, let's say that we had some like samples here and I'm just going to draw a linear line since that's what we have here. One, two, three, four, and five. And maybe you have like the areas, you know, under the curve, something that looks like this. And you want to use this as some, you know, approximation function for the area under the curve or the line or the function. Okay. So that could be like one example. Maybe you just have that data coming in and if for whatever reason, it's useful to just like have, you know, part of it, the first half, well, you have that partial sum here. So that could be useful for that use case. The other use case where I could think of that's maybe sort of interesting is if I have just, again, a range of values here, but I have something that's not just an integer, but maybe some custom object that represents like a range of something like a game. We'll actually code that up and take a look at it, but let's start with this example and just get something working with partial sum here. So again, looking at partial sum, it takes in, uh, let's go ahead and maximize this here. Uh, and we'll look at the since C++ 20, which gives us a const expert version of the function. It takes in an iterator and then we write out the value wherever we want. Okay. Could be in the same uh, container if we wanted, but I'm going to go ahead and write it out to a result here. And then we do have an overload, which we'll look at in this video, since we haven't looked at this in the previous adjacent uh, difference video, uh, where we can write our own binary operation function if we have our own custom objects. Or as we'll see on the example here on CPP reference, we could do instead of additions, you could do multiplies for instance. But again, the intuition being that we're sort of accumulating values as we walk along here. So again, that was the goal here. We're accumulating at, in our result here as we move further and further uh, along based off of the previous values to get to 15. We took the previous value and then the uh, value that we're accumulating here. Okay. So that's how we got 15 here. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and uh, code it up here. Um, now, as far as some details here, we're going to look at some other numeric algorithms like exclusive scan and inclusive scan, um, which I'll have to look at, but they have some ability to paralyze this process as well, uh, which we haven't really looked at the execution policies, but we will. So again, stay subscribed for that. Uh, but let's go ahead and move along here. Um, let's see. So I think we looked at this. We'll look at this, uh, operation. In fact, I'll hold on to that later because we'll want that uh, signature here. Uh, and then again, the return value iterator to the past, uh, the last element written. Okay. And the complexity, again, the number of elements that we're looking at. This is sort of another interesting one to probably implement from scratch. You could look at an example here or just try it out with a numbers array. Again, just a good little, uh, practice here. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's go ahead and scroll down. We'll keep the example open, but we'll go ahead and implement, uh, what we did here. So I'm going to go ahead and use a vector, uh, just to be explicit. I'll put an int here. Uh, we'll call this V here and one, two, three, four, five, and then we'll create a result, uh, array here. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and make 
space for five elements here, or rather a result uh, vector, dynamic array. Um, and let's go ahead and just call partial uh, sum on it uh, for the beginning to the end. Again, we don't have to do the whole uh, range here, but again, we're going to start from the beginning all the way to the end. So pass in an iterator here. Um, and then if you want, you can see from CPP reference, we've got by default, it's going to do addition. Um, but we do have some of these functors uh, available here, like multiplies, which basically is just a function object that's overridden the uh, operator uh, function call here to do a multiplication on each element, the previous element and then the current element that you're operating on. So we could we could play around with that if we want. Um, maybe let's just go ahead and we'll do that quickly. But let's go ahead and uh, write out to our result here. And then we'll go ahead and write this out here. Um, let's go ahead and just for fun do a for each. We haven't done that in a while, which is in algorithm. Let's see if we can get this right on the first time. And let's do this for each of our results in the beginning to the end. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do our lambda here for each element. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is, again, just to sort of review um, some different things that we've done here. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and write out each element. We'll put a comma in between them. Let's see if we get this right on the first time. Uh, and then let's put an end line here. Standard, C out, and then an end line here. Well, compile, compiles, and runs. Okay, so we get 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, uh, which matches our example. Did it right on the first time? 1, 3, 6, 10, 15 there. Okay, so no problem there. Uh, and again, uh, just if we want to get a little bit more flexibility here, as mentioned, we can go ahead and do standard. I think it's just multiplies. Let's go ahead and make this full screen just so you can see. Uh, the function object here. Uh, and now we're going to get 1, 2, 6, 24, 120, which is interestingly, you know, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial, and 5 factorial. Um, so this could be a way that you generate that sequence of values. Again, I would probably use this more for like numeric processing, but again, this could be like some sort of uh, generation function uh, for you if you want to factorial values, right? Uh, we learned about iota previously, so you could use iota in a partial sum. Again, just as a building block, uh, perhaps that's cleaner than a loop. Uh, probably generates the same code. You could check on Godbolt, uh, but not a bad idea here. Uh, let's go ahead, though, and um, I'll go ahead and uh, preserve this example here uh, just so you can see it in the uh, comments here, just in case you want to see what it looks like to pass in the other functor. Um, but let's go ahead and do another example here. Let's copy this here. And basically what I want to do here is let's work with a, another vector here. I'll call this V2. And let's update this. And result 2 as well. Uh, just so we're writing out to some different uh, value. So result 2, result 2, etc. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just run that. We should see the same thing twice. Perfect. But what I actually want to do this time is create a custom object here. Let's actually create something. Um, and for this, I have sort of a more fun example, maybe something that you would use this for. Like, let's say we've got a more interesting data structure here. I'm just going to call this like um, dice rolls or something. Like maybe you're writing a game. Um, and basically, I just want a like low value and a high value. Again, I'm going to do this uh kind of crudely here i'll manually put this but again we learned about like the min and max or min max function that you could also use on this to ensure that the min is always the first value uh and the max is the the later but i'm going to just manually put these in for now uh what i mean by that is for my uh v2 now which is going to take in uh dice rolls i'm going to go ahead and pass in a pair here and just put in like one three uh and then four and six and then let's see five and uh, six, uh, two and four. And let's go ahead and do one more just so we have five here. One, two, three, four, five, uh, one and six again. Okay. So now I've got a series of pairs here and then I want, I'm going to want to run a partial uh, sum on these values here. And this is where things could get kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and again, from CPP reference, basically I want to implement uh, my own binary operation here. So a different way to add things up and compute the partial sum. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this function signature here. 
Uh, again, anytime you see the binary function, that just means, you know, taking in two parameters here. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, we'll just go ahead and write that out. And I can write it as a free function here. Uh, let's see, the return value is going to be a uh, dice roll here. <laughs> dice rolls for A and dice rolls. Um, again, you know, this is sort of a made up example here, but let's say that, uh, you know, we have our dice roll here and then our roll is going to, uh, you know, the, the low value is going to consist of the, well, let's just kind of debug it for now. The A low plus the B low and the roll uh, high is going to equal the B or, or rather A uh, high plus the B uh, high here. And then we'll return the uh, dice roll there. Okay. So again, this is just some function. All I'm doing is adding up the pairs, the low and the high value for the individual objects that are coming in here. Um, and then we're going to run a partial sum on it. Okay. So basically the partial sum is going to return or execute rather this function uh, successively. So let's go ahead and apply it here on our partial sum uh for each of these here okay and then we'll go ahead and uh now to write this out i think i'm gonna have to write that the element low uh and the element uh high here and for this one let's actually put a end line afterwards uh, just to give us a little bit more room here and let's go ahead and just do that for debugging let's see if we get this right on the first try uh let's see almost oh it's not roll it should be uh fun here so I didn't change the function here. So whatever we're passing in here. Um, but now we can see, okay, so the first set of our partial thing is one and three. And I'm going to add four and six. So I'm adding four to one here, which gives me five. And then six to three, which gives me nine here. Okay, so that's that second pair added here. And then I'm accumulating this sum here, right? This is a cumulative sum, another way to think of partial sum. I'm going to add five now to this five and get 10. Six now to this nine and give me 15 and so on and so forth. Okay, so now I've got a range here. So again, just showing you something interesting, you know, this particular function, again, there might be some numeric uh, processing folks out here. Maybe you've got a better use case for it, but just showing you that it could be quite flexible. Again, I sort of think about games or, you know, you're generating two random numbers and then you wanna have some sort of range here or something and partially sum them up. I don't know, maybe that's like scores or stats of a character in a game or something, uh, but you could do something fun or clever with it. But hopefully that's useful uh, for you just to again, see how to use some of these algorithms. Again, they really are flexible building blocks or you could think about this in your own APIs uh, and libraries that you build, but uh, this was kind of fun here to uh, think about here. So anyways, we understand partial sum, how it works, how to use it with custom objects uh, and write our comparator function. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed that lesson, folks. And if you're enjoying this, as always, you can go ahead and keep track of your progress on my site here, course.mshaw.io. Uh, make sure you track your progress here. There's been a lot of different algorithms that we've checked out. And if you want the crash course into C++, I've got a basic one here. Uh, you know, just a little project here to get you up and running if you're just getting started on your C++ journey. So anyways, folks, thanks as always for your support and comments. I've been enjoying them uh, in the previous videos. It's been fun to learn from you as well. And with that said, folks, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks again for your time and attention.